Hello everybody, I'm Tara and thank you for joining me for another video on crafting with curly cues. Today I'm going to be using some paper smooches and the alleyway stamp stamp sets as well as some distress inks to be creating a watercolor background that has a little bit more control than just a smushing technique which is so popular right now. Um, so I'm taking this new stamp set from the alleyway stamps. It's called O Splat. And it's fabulous. It's got all these like paint splatter designs that are these nice solid stamps that you can create a really great background with. And I'm just taking my distress inks and I'm inking those up and then I'm spritzing it with water right onto the stamp. And this is going to allow it to kind of smush around a little bit better when I stamp it on that watercolor cardstock. Um, that watercolor cardstock is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And the colors that I'm using here today are the picked raspberry, orange marmalade, mustard seed, um, cracked pistachio, mermaid lagoon, and seedless preserves. And you can see that I am going to go ahead and take my heat tool and heat set these in between the color splatters that I stamp. I'm doing this because I don't really want the colors to melt together and create new colors. I want them to kind of stamp on top of one another and create like color layers as opposed to new colors and if I left them wet they would um, mix together and do what watercolors will do and create all those new colors and so I was trying to avoid that by heat setting in between. So now I'm going to add um, another color. I'm putting that cracked pistachio on there and then I'm going to go ahead and put another one on before I heat set since they're not going to be overlapping much. This was just a really fun way to create a rainbow and do a little bit of a different watercolor background. I really like the look of the, the freeform watercolor backgrounds and it's really fun to play with the different products and figure out what's going to create these backgrounds um, that just allow the color to just be and um, go where it wants to and not have to stress too much about things being perfect. So now I'm going to go ahead and heat that set that now that I have a couple of those on there so that I can start doing some more layering with the colors that I have. And the next splotch that I'm going to select from that stamp set is a little bit smaller. And it's going to go ahead and stamp right in the middle. And I really like the way that it looks when it goes over the top. And you can see what I mean with that stamping on top of the color rather than melting all the colors together and blending into new colors. You can really see how that blue stays vibrant even on top of that seedless preserves or excuse me, that's picked raspberry and the cracked pistachio there. So that's a really great way um, to do that. For a full list of all the colors that I've used and all the supplies that I'm using, you can visit my blog and that's going to be linked below in the description here on YouTube so that you can um, go back to that and find all the different products that I've used here. So I'm just going to continue to stamp these on here until I get just the right amount of smushy mess that I like. And it's really, um, really fun to see how the colors come out when they're used together like this. I like how the stamp set includes not only these bigger splotches, but it's got a lot of little tiny spots as well, which are fun to really add the character to the scene kind of and be able to go in and add these little paint splotches in addition to the big, big open spots. As I stamped these smaller ones, I kind of stopped using the spritzer to spritz directly onto the stamp because these smaller stamps were not keeping much shape at all when I added the, the spritz water on top. So instead I just started going directly from the stamp pad onto the watercolor cardstock. Um, distress inks are really, they're, they're meant to react with water and to move around. So even going straight onto the pad without spritzing, they still don't stamp a really solid image, which is fine. That's not what they're supposed to do. That's not what you use them for. But um, it, it still allowed the image to not, not look super crisp, which is what I was going for here with this one. You, you can see how I really don't have much of a plan. I'm just kind of stamping there where I want to. I'm going to be using the Paper Smooches Spectrum stamp set. I'll show you here in a little bit. It's got this amazing whimsical unicorn and the sentiments refer to rainbows and sunshine and 
I just was super excited and inspired because that kind of stuff is just so stinking cute and I love it. So that was what made me want to pick all these different vibrant distressing colors and just go to town with this background here. So that was really fun. I love when something just kind of jumps out at you and inspires you like that. And I can't handle the unicorn. It's too much. Simply love it. Alright, so I'm just taking all these little ones and kind of going back with some of the colors that I'd already used just to make sure that there's plenty of the different colors kind of around. Um, now here I'm, I'm finishing up with the stamping and you can see what the background looks like now and it's beautiful and it would have been great just to leave it here and you could absolutely stop at this point and leave it a little bit more um, of a controlled crisp looking background, but I decided that I wanted it to be a little bit more kind of flowy and whimsical and watercolory. And so what I did after I had done all this is I actually took my spritzer here and I just spritzed a little bit of water directly onto that finished background. And you can see how those colors start to kind of move and bleed and um, spread into one another. And so to kind of prevent that from going crazy, because I still kind of wanted to be able to see the different color splotches, I went ahead and took my heat tool and just set that. And now what I'm doing is just spritzing plain old clear water into my hand and then I'm flicking it onto the, the piece of watercolor paper onto all that Distress Ink that I've stamped. And what I'm going to do is let that sit there for a little while, I'd say at least 30 seconds to a minute, and then I'm going to blotch it off with my paper towel. And what that does with Distress Inks, so cool, is it actually wicks away the color where the water was sitting and it looks like little bleach spots on top of your piece and so it just kind of adds this extra whimsical element that you can't really get with any other product. So here's that adorable Spectrum stamp set by Paper Smooches and I actually already had this little unicorn from a prior project that I had colored with Copic markers. You can see all the colors on my blog um, if you go there and I had fussy cut it out and um, I didn't end up using it for that other project so I had it sitting there so it was kind of what inspired wanting to do this background. So I'm going to take that sentiment there about the rainbows and the sunshine and take my, my Lawn Fawn Black Licorice ink. I love this ink for sentiments. It is so crisp. Um, it's a great black ink. And I realized once I started putting this on my ink pad that I had never used this stamp and it wasn't it wasn't um, looking like it was going to stamp really clear, so I just kind of stamped it off a little bit, and that's great to do with new stamps to get them kind of going so you get a nice crisp image. So then I'm going to go ahead and center this underneath that um, background that I've created and stamp my sentiment. I'm going to push really hard, you'll see, because I am using watercolor cardstock, and it's a little bit more porous, uneven, so sometimes getting a crisp image is a little bit more difficult. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and adhere this watercolor piece to my card base. I am using a card base from Close to My Heart. They are um, prepackaged cards and envelopes and I really enjoy them and that way I don't have to cut down a card base because hey if I could save myself some work why not. So it is an A2 size card and it is a side folding so I'm just going to line that up with the crease and the reason that I line up with the crease is so that when I inevitably do not put this on straight which happens to me every time I'm trying to line something up. I can then take my scissors and um, trim that other end and it's not going to hurt, hurt the card at all. Um, you can see here that I'm kind of bending that, that that watercolor cardstock is is a lot thicker than normal cardstock and when you do all that watercoloring and heat setting it tends to warp a little bit. So I was just kind of bending it back into the right shape a little bit. So there I'm trimming that edge because I of course didn't line it up correctly because that's just the way life goes for me. So, um, but no harm, no foul. You can't even tell. Once you trim it up, it's not a problem at all. So now I'm going to use some Scotch um, foam adhesive and I'm just going to put it on the back of that little unicorn so that he pops up with some dimension there. This took a little bit of time because I did have to kind of cut my pieces down a little in order to fit them on the back of this little unicorn. And then I'm actually, once this is all done and I stick him on there, I'm going to take some Pretty Pink Posh Sparkling Clear Sequins in 6mm and 4mm. And I'm just going to sprinkle those around my unicorn on top of that um, pretty rainbow background. So here is the finished card. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like the video, please give me a like and hit subscribe. Um, you can also join me on Facebook, Pinterest, and so much more. And have a great day. Bye!